the New York Knicks go on the road without Julius Randle, without Mitchell Robinson, and without OG Ananobi, and they beat the Golden State Warriors 119-112. to 112. Deuce McBride and Isaiah Hartenstein were electric, and Jalen Brunson continues to do Jalen Brunson things. We'll break down all the stats, all the highlights over the big win over the Warriors in a second, but I want to get to the news of the day surrounding the New York Knicks. OG Ananobi did not play versus the Warriors. He did play versus the Kings on Saturday, and he did play on Thursday in that win over the Portland Trailblazers. But in that game, he got a steal on DeAndre Ayton, and he immediately yelled out in pain after that. And you know what? At the time, I said, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not thrilled about this. I'm extremely worried. Everybody told me, Marshall, calm down. You can't re-injure the bone spur. Well, he did not play today, and according to Adrian Wojnarowski, he might be out longer. This is what Adrian Wojnarowski, a.k.a. Woj, said on ESPN prior to the Knicks win over the Golden State Warriors. And I quote, OG Ananobi is going to be out more than just tonight. That right elbow has flared up again. They needed to calm down. How long he is out is unclear, but it's certainly a concern. They will miss OG Ananobi for more than just tonight's game. That's awful news. That is awful, awful news. After OG had that injury, whatever term you want to have, I'm going to say re-aggravated in that Portland loss, Tibbs said that this is part of the process. He said we expected these things. Well, Stefan Bondi said OG's flared up. Uh, he flared up his elbow. And an OB flew home from Sacramento to New York after the win. The MRI did come back clean. That is great news. Also, it's unlikely he plays in Thursday in Denver. This is all from Tom Thibodeau, according to Stefan Bondi. Tibbs also said this prior to the game on Ananobi. You can't work backwards when talking about if Ananobi came back too soon. He said there's many steps he had to go through. He met all the markers. He was cleared. This is a possibility. Whenever you come back from surgery, this is what you're looking at. We feel good about where he is. Whether he comes back on Thursday, whether he comes back on Saturday, whenever he comes back, I think it's safe to say that OG's, OG's elbow is not right. There is a reason that following the win over the Portland Trailblazers, I did a video titled New York Knicks Injury Rumors because there were rumors about how serious the Ananobi injury is. And since then, he has pretty much been playing one-handed and somehow is still the best defender on the floor. But on offense, he has been a liability. He's one of eight from the field in his last two games, and he was 0 of 4 from 3 for Sacramento. But the most alarming th thing to me, though, was he shot a three against Portland, left it short. Shot looked weird. Free throws against Portland, left it shot. Shot looked weird. This is terrible news. Maybe he just doesn't get back to 100% this year. Maybe that's just something that we need to stomach. And even though you beat the Golden State Warriors tonight, and I don't want to pour, pour water on the party right now, it's going to be really hard for the New York Knicks to compete versus top teams in this league without Ananobi. And that's why you made the trade for OG that included RJ and Emmanuel quickly, was so that you could get a defensive game wrecker at that small forward position to match up against top guys in this league, like Tatum and like maybe a guy like Giannis. Unfortunately, it sounds like he's going to miss a couple of games. Hopefully he can get back to 100% before the playoffs. But I don't know if we ever get there. And he may need another surgery in the offseason. Not great news. Did not play versus Golden State. Probably not playing against Denver. He had to fly home. Guys, that's how serious this was. He had to fly home from Sacramento to New York to get an MRI. Came back clean. That's good news. But it just does not feel right right now. Let's get OG and OB healthy. Let's get OG and OB healthy. Like the video. <sighs> I'm praying up where somewhere that the more likes we get on this video, the more likely it is he's healthy and ready to go. So if you haven't yet, hit this thumbs up, thumbs up icon and let's hope that OG gets healthy. Woj also said this on Julius Randle. We don't know the status of Julius Randle moving forward. Randle's almost been out for two months. He separated that right shoulder on January 27th. 
The NBA playoffs start on April 20th. I think it's safe to say that Randall's going to have to play through pain, and Randall is going to need off-season surgery. There were multiple doctors and specialists that recommended that Randall get surgery. He said, I'm not going to do it. He said he's going to play through it. But he hasn't played yet, and there's no timetable yet of when it will be. I say all that to say this. Stop believing the Knicks medical staff. They said he'd be reevaluated in two to three weeks. It's been almost two months. They told us that OG Ananobi was fine. Stop believing the Knicks medical staff. Think about it like this. In the game that Mitchell Robinson got hurt, and they essentially ruled him out for eight to ten weeks, when he got hurt, he was cleared to go back in the game. He went back in the game, and then he was, has not played since December 11th. OG and an OB was cleared to go back in the game of the second half against the Portland Trailblazers. He is now going to miss that minimum of two games. I don't want to say anyone is doing a terrible job, and I don't want to say anyone is liars. But the New York Knicks medical staff, they need to do a better job. And it's not their job to be transparent with us, but overall they need to do a better job. In games that Robinson and Ananobi got hurt, they said they were cleared to return that game. Said Randall was out two to three weeks. They got to get healthy. They got to get healthy. It's been the theme almost for two months now. If we get any more injury news, we will make a video as soon as possible. So subscribe for free, informative, entertaining updates on you, your New York Knicks every day. And join us this Thursday for the number one place on YouTube to watch a Knicks game with 20,000 plus. New York Knicks fans every single night. Coming up next, we're going to break down what may just be the win of the season for the Knicks over the Golden State Warriors. But first, I got to make sure everybody watching today's video is hooked up with our proud sponsor, Prize Picks. It's prizepicks.com slash CLNS, promo code CLNS, and Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. I kindly ask everybody to support the show and also support the sponsor. We are lucky to have Prize Picks out as a sponsor, and the only way we'll be able to keep them is if you guys sign up with them and use that promo code CLNS. Prize Picks is daily fantasy sports made easy. All you do is create a lineup of two to six players, and you simply choose more or less on their projected stat line. You pick more, you pick less, you play Prize Picks. And just because the NFL season is over with does not mean the time to stop playing Prize Picks is now. To be honest with you, I'm not sure there's a better time in the calendar to play Prize Picks. As the NBA action is heating up, postseason is right around the corner, and March Madness starts this week, and they are going to be having specials for what seems like every day on March Madness games with Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Use the promo code CLNS, and if you submit a lineup and you take a screenshot of it and send it to me on Twitter, I'll give you a follow back. I'll give you a follow back. Prizepicks.com slash CLNS. All that information will be clickable down in the comments and description. Win real money and take it out of your account whenever you uh, want. There's a reason it's the number one daily fantasy sports app in the game. When the Knicks win, I like to give out game balls to players in the game. And I got to give out two. I got to give out two. But the number one obviously goes to Miles McBride and what he was able to do in tonight's win over the Warriors. Deuce McBride set the tone from the get-go. He was awesome on offense. No doubt about it. 29 points. 9 of 13 from the field. 6 of 9 from downtown. Um, hit a big time shot in the fourth quarter. With three minutes left. That left wing three. He was excellent. But what he did on the defensive end. The way he made Steph Curry work. For every single bucket. There are people in this league. That have been put into retirement. By guarding Steph Curry. And he held him to do 8 of 20 and 4 of 13. No easy shots, no easy looks. In his hip pocket, off of every screen, after every curl, after every pin down. Deuce McBride was electric, man. Get the twos in the chat for Deuce. Also, the fact that he went at him. Like, there's uh, sometimes your best defense when guarding a great player is making them play defense and exert injury and energy on that side of the floor. And Deuce McBride, he did that as well. If I had a second game ball. It's got to go to Isaiah Hartenstein, right? Um, I know the stats aren't sexy today, 
I know the stats aren't sexy. 13 points, 10 rebounds, 4 assists. Um, but not not someone that, you know, just is in love with plus minus. But he was a plus 26 tonight. Whenever Hartenstein was on the floor, the New York Knicks were the much better team by far. Whether it was the eight first quarter points, the two-man game with him and Brunson, meeting Kaminga at the rim, a couple of blocks for Hartenstein, one block, two steals, six of seven from the field man. His energy, his minutes, and his production were a huge reason why the Knicks won this game. Two game balls tonight. One to Hartenstein, one to Deuce. Somehow Jalen Brunson scores 34 points, seven assists, and five rebounds and doesn't get a uh, game ball. Probably not fair to him, but I don't ever want to come be complacent and come to expect it. But I've been saying for over a year that I think Jalen Brunson's one of the best point guards in this league, and he outplayed Curry tonight. Someone asked me in the pregame show, what's the X factor tonight? Brunson has to outplay Curry, and, and, he, and he thoroughly did that. 34 points on 25 shots, seven assists, five rebounds. Had some sloppy fourth quarter turnovers. We won't talk about those too much, um, but he did a great job. And there's a reason he's the captain. And there's a reason he's one of the most clutch players in this league. Um, hats off to Jalen Brunson. Josh Hart. Up and down, up and down. And it's been a lot of ups as of late. Um, what, is this his four, fifth triple-double? Fifth triple-double since January 3rd? He had zero triple-doubles in his career coming into, the, into this year. He's got five since January 30th. 10, 11, and 11. He did his best Draymond Green experience tonight. Couldn't hit the broad side of a barn. 5 of 18, 0 of 6, but a clutch bucket underneath the rim late. He had a coast-to-coast -coast finish in the fourth quarter. Um, Josh Hart does what Josh Hart does. Grit and grind. Grit and grind. Another key to tonight's game was going to need Dante DiVincenzo to get back on track. It seems like 4-13 has become the new norm for DiVincenzo when it comes to field goals and field goals made. But tonight, against his old team, the Golden State Warriors, he got back on track, and the Knicks needed every single one of the buckets that he was able to give. 18 points for DiVincenzo, 4 of 8 from 3, 7 to 13 from downtown. When DiVincenzo makes his shots, the Knicks are one of the best teams in the league. <sighs> I'm getting tired of the Detroit boys. I am. I, I really am. I thought Bogey had a big bucket. Was it in the fourth he got to the foul line and pulled up? That was big. But man, it's tough to get that Detroit stank off of Bogdanovich and Burks. And they've brought it to the, the Knicks. They just have to be better. Because they can't be much worse. You're, you're 3 of 11 combined. I can't remember the last time Bogdanovich hit an open 3. If they're going to play like this in the playoffs, they're unplayable. They're simply unplayable. And that's coming from a guy that thought they won the NBA trade deadline because of this trade. So far, I've been wrong. I don't want to be wrong on this one. Because if you could get freaking anything from Burks or Bogdanovich, that makes your team so much scarier. They really need something from those guys. They really, really do. You didn't get shit from them. And you still beat the Warriors. No bogey, no Burks, no OG. No Randall, no Mitch. And you thoroughly outplay the Warriors for 48 minutes. It just got a little bit close there in that fourth quarter. I don't know if it's the win of the season, but it was up there for me. It was up there for me. Shout out to everybody watching the show. If you haven't yet, hit that thumbs up icon. Subscribe to the channel. We'll be live Thursday. If you haven't joined us for one of our watch parties, what are you doing? Get out from under the rock you're living and be a real one. And follow me on Twitter, at MarshallGreen underscore. And follow me on Instagram, at Marshall Green underscore free, informative, entertaining New York Knicks content every single day. Let's go Knicks.